pleasure to be here. This is actually my very first visit ever to Ireland, and uh, um, really glad that I finally got a chance to come here. So, uh, me, I'm a scientist in background, so to do a somewhat scientific talk yeah, is also fun as a change for most of the time I speak of just how it is to be a national. But I try to do a little bit of both here. Uh, now, uh, my background is a particle physicist, so now I'm a little bit challenged to talk a little bit uh, rather about uh, biology and chemistry and chemistry life, but I'll do my best. And uh, I was working at CERN, which is the biggest particle physics laboratory in the world, located outside Geneva, at this huge tunnel, 27 kilometers uh, in uh, circumference, and there are now experiments in that tunnel, colliding particles, and experiments are big as big, huge houses. I was working there uh, in the, well, 88 to 91, and it was very exciting, and, but I was in Sweden for a conference, and I went to a friend of mine in one evening, and he said, hey, I found a new job for you. And so he was joking, I said, well, I'm doing science, physics is nothing better. Well, they're looking for astronauts. I thought he, he, I was, he was kidding, but the next day he gave me this, which he cut out for the newspaper. <laughs> European Space Agency is looking for up to 10 astronauts. And what I always had in mind, if there's ever a chance to go to space, then I would at least have to try to take it. So I did. I applied. It was a long, long process with a lot of tests and stuff. But about two years later, I got selected as one of the five uh, new East astronauts. That, that was the second group ever. We have actually only three open uh, selections in East ever for astronauts. And um, I came to uh, EAC, European National Center, in Cologne, Germany. But I was only there for one year. Then I was told to go to Russia, which was a big surprise, because no one had said that during this whole two years of selection. I'm even more surprised to my wife, who was too happy first. <laughs> But we had a lot of interesting things in Russia for a couple of years. I was just trained as a backup there. Then I got sent to NASA and trained there for a shuttle. And after many years, partly due to the Columbia accident, which happened in 2003, a year after I got assigned to the flight called STS-116. But finally, uh, in the beginning of December 2006, I was sitting there in the top of this shuttle discovery, waiting for the engines to start. <coughs> and uh, the feeling I had was more just excitement, happy to go. When this thing starts, it's still a bit different. It happened that it had started, but uh, suddenly the wrong technology did, they don't get off going. But once these big ones go in, the boost is on the side, there's no return. You go somewhere. And it's a bit shaky. These things are pretty shaky, the big boosters, and a little bit shaky. It's like a lot of nose and nose. Although you're not really scared. Uh, it's a big kick. This is about 950 million horsepower. Which I like to point out to people if they brag about the new cars, 3200 horsepower. It's got the 2000 tons, which uh, is all of it when it starts. Most of it is just fuel. After about two minutes, uh, boosters on the sides have finished burning and they fall off and uh, fall down in the Atlantic where they actually get picked up and quickly reused. Yeah, then it's another six and a half minutes ride now using only the engines, the built in engines in the shop itself. And the, the fuel from them is on this big tank which the whole shuttle, so to say, is sitting on. But that's only uh, hydrogen and oxygen which makes water, so it's very clean uh, exhausts. A little bit of chemistry there, by the way, yes. <laughs> so after eight and, a half min eight and a half minutes, you're up in space, you're in weightlessness, and it's new life. It takes about two days before we get to the station, not because it's so far away, but it's just the easiest way to kind of con construct the whole uh, system of how you fly. There we met three guys who were on the station. One of them, a fellow East okay. Astronaut, Thomas Wright, from Germany. And on the next day after we had the first spacewalk, 
And that was certainly the highlight to kind of float around on that side of the space station and do the work. We're doing construction work. The first space work, we brought up a next uh, module to the space station. And we kind of actually put these bolt drivers, we put it in place. Also, we have a robotic arm which put it in position. Uh, at this time in uh, December 2006, the space station was just more or less half ready built. And uh, one of the things we had to do was actually also to uh, retract the solar array, which was to be moved from one place to another. However, it's a true solar array, about 30 meters long, like 80 folds, and if you think of a map, which you mean, unfolded for uh, five years and then tried to fold it back like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it doesn't Same thing with this. Yeah. And here we have a little yeah. press conference yeah. with Stockholm. Yeah. This is the Swedish Crown Princess and I'm showing how microgravity you can do things in, with frisbees. Yeah. Well, the connected before. No one had had a frisbee spinning such a long time before. Yeah. It's different on our so we got an extra spacewalk, which is unplanned, which is pretty unusual, but it was very exciting. Yes. And we said everybody has to solve the problem, and this is a ground control in the yes, mission control in Houston, and we and they and everyone was very happy when we actually in the end could solve this problem to fold, retract the solar array. Then we left the station of eight days there. We had two more days in space and had a few minor experiments to uh, deploy from the shuttle. Um, this one slowly floats away, releases two round balls, which will uh, which investigate it. Those still rests in the atmosphere, what chemicals are there still at that altitude, about 300 kilometers. Uh, two days before Christmas, uh, we are back in Florida. Our, uh, Commander does a perfect touchdown. And you know, he only has to get one chance. The shuttle, when it comes back, it's like a glider, very bad glider though, coming in like a brick almost. Uh, but you better do it right because you kind of put on the engines and get, get another truck. So that was in 2006, and uh, the most memorial you know, photo from that flight is this one. Uh, at some website, it was called the Travel Picture of the Year, 2006. <laughs> and then uh, there was some blog after that, people commenting, and someone wrote an uh, obvious fake, typical uh, Photoshop joke. <laughs> but then I like to point out, I know it's, it's true, it's, I, I was there, and uh, this is actually what you see here is New Zealand, this is the capital Wellington up there. And it uh, also was on the front page of all the papers in New Zealand. It was a friend of mine who was there at the time. So <coughs> you can also see a little bit of how you do spacewalks here. For example, they have these safety uh, lines which are connected close to the airlock. And uh, even if those would break, if you fall off on the backpack here, you carry kind of a safety rocket packets where you can activate with a little joystick. and fly back. And you train that as a very cool uh, computer game. <laughs> well, like, as I mentioned, when we were up there then in December 2006, we just passed the halfway mark of building the space station. What? And uh, a little bit over a year after that, a uh, very big milestone for Europe happened. The European module, uh, Laboratory Columbus, was brought up to the station and uh, docked to it. And uh, that was partly done during an EVA, which is German national township. But on this uh, laboratory, most of the science we do inside here, but we also do some things outside, a couple of things mounted outside. And one of them was called UTEF, European Technolo Technology Exposure Facility. And on it was nine different experiments of various kinds, most of them studying what happens to material or how is it with a vacuum when it's outside uh, in space. And one was called Expose E, E for Europe, and that's the one we'll talk uh, a lot of here now. <coughs> it was brought up then, but it was going to come down someday also, and it was going to come down with this mission, SS-128, which uh, was also my <coughs> second mission to space. Uh, and I was, fortunately, I didn't have to wait another 14 years for my second trip flight. <laughs> two, two uh, and a half years. And uh, one of the crew members here was 
Nicole stopped and she was she going to go up to the space station and stay there. We were going to change, exchange her with one of the crew members. That time, by the way, the space station had six crew members, and almost completely built now. And we didn't bring up any new modules to the station, we just brought up new experiments, food, etc. But during EVA, she, together with Danny here, would bring uh, this uh, UTEF pack with the expose E. And this, by the way, is a photo from that launch of one EJ. It was exactly midnight between 28th and 29th of August. And what you see here is not the shuttle going down and coming crashing back. Uh, it actually shows you what it's all about. You go up, uh, and you need to go up about 200 kilometers. So you're really above all the atmosphere. By definition, we so that the space starts at 100 kilometers because there is already almost no atmosphere. But normally, you need to go up to 200, uh, really. And that is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is to get all the speed you need to stay up there, not fall back. So most of the time, you, you don't go up. You go up, and then you follow the Earth to get the speed. And that's what you see here. Earth is round, so this is how we follow the curvature of the Earth. Uh, and the speed we need is about 28,000 kilometers per hour, by the way. 8 kilometers per second. Uh, so, um, we came up to the space station, which is now complete. Beautiful when you see it like that. And here is our European laboratory, Columbus. And here out there is this UTEF with Exposi. And uh, now, it's a little show here how, it, how we got it back. Inside here, this is the cockpit of the shuttle, the shuttle Discovery. And here is uh, our mission specialist one, Pat Forrester, who is an <coughs> leading the space walk from inside and outside we have Nicole and Danny and uh, Nicole is on the robotic arm which is operated from the inside she's carrying this uh, UTEF thing into the payload bay of the shuttle where they put it in the back there that's how we then got it back to Earth you also take the opportunity to get some nice views when you're outside you do much, a lot of work but then and at first Nicole was very happy <laughs> She's kind of playing around. You shouldn't do this the first days. You can get very uh, ill then, but after a while you get used to uh, weightlessness. And here she shows a new form of bunny jumping. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see how happy she is. 